Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dina with the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. Um, we will go ahead and get started in just a couple minutes with our Measurable Skills Gains webinar. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you in just a minute. Good afternoon again, everyone. This is Dina with the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership, and I'm here with Dora and Christy, Anne and Gabby, and I know some of our other program folks are listening in from uh, out in the field. And today we're going to talk about uh, the new-ish, but new to us, measurable skills gain, uh, which is a new performance measure under WIOA. And we're going to talk, um, and, and you can see I found this nice little meme, because what would we do without the internet? In order to arrive at a new destination, you have to gain the skills needed to drive on new paths. So, and really this, this, this um, new, the new skill gain is really designed to ca capture in-program progress towards, at, towards skill gain. Um, and so that's what we're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about today. Um, uh, just for those of you who might be new to our webinars, you are all in listen-only mode. Um, if you have any questions at any time during the webinar, just type them into the question box. Um, we're going to answer as many questions as we can during the call. Um, I will say that the, we're still wrapping our heads around the measurable skills gains a little bit, and so you may have questions for us that we cannot answer. Any questions that you have for us that we can't answer, we will take back to Commerce and try to get answers on. Um, but And then whatever we can answer today, we will. Um, all the materials from this webinar will be posted on the help desk, um, including once we have the recording, we'll post that as well. Um, so uh, also the handout, the PowerPoint from today, and the measurable skills game procedure um, and also another procedure that I emailed yesterday I'm going to talk about very briefly are also all attached in the handout section for the webinar. So you can also download them from uh, the little webinar tool. There should be a handout option. If you click on that, you'll be able to also download the, hand, the handouts from there. Um, So our agenda today, like I said, we're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about the measurable skills gain, but we wanted to give you a couple quick Career Connect updates. So um, the first update is that um, GeoCell, our vendor, has upgraded, is, is has or is in the process of upgrading the system to kind of a new 
interim version, we're, we're on version 18, we're, we're coming up to version 18.1. We just got notification about some of these updates yesterday, have not even had a chance to look through them, but we already know that some of you have seen some of the updates. I'm going to show one in just a minute um, that has confused a couple people this morning, um, so sorry about that. We didn't know either. Um, overall, though, the, the updates should have a minimal impact on WIOA. Um, uh, it's a lot of new reports, which some of which are things we've asked for, so we're excited about that. And um, you might just notice some changes in how the screens look a little bit, but in terms of actual substance, I haven't seen anything so far that looks substantial. If we find anything that we think we need to let you know about, we will definitely get that out to you. There's actually, unfortunately, they scheduled a webinar about the changes at the same time as this webinar. So um, again, we were a little blindsided by this, so we apologize, but it should be minimal. If you do find any issues, anything that you're confused about, or something that seems like it's not working, please just email the help desk as soon as possible. Um, we're always there to help you through it. And, you know, anytime there's updates, there's a possibility for bugs. And so if you catch anything, please, please speak up. We always appreciate being alerted to things sooner rather than later. Um, um, so the one thing that came up today is there's some new um, filters on the program screen. And we'll show this too when we go in the demo. But basically, when you go into the programs area, the case um, staff profile, case management profile programs, there are some new filters, um, including being able to filter by program um, and the types of applications that you would see. So if you go in and suddenly you're like, my WIOA application for this person is gone, it's not gone, it's probably your filters. So just try changing your filters and it should um, come, come out. Also, it seems like the filters may look a little different in Explorer versus Chrome. We're not sure why. Some people are getting an all program filter. I wasn't getting that when I took the screenshot. Um, so, but, um, and you can select multiple filters um, by clicking control and clicking on multiple. So if you, you know, if you do administer any of our non wheel programs like Opportunity Works or Summer Jobs and Beyond, you, you'll still be able to see both program. Um, so that was the change that we were alerted to this morning. Thank you uh, to the person who alerted us, or people. Brenda. <laughs> Brenda <laughs> thank you, Brenda. Um, and again, sorry if this caused any confusion. We were, we did not, we weren't aware that this was coming through today. So. Um, all right. The other thing that um, we wanted to alert you about, most of you have probably gotten emails from your um, uh, regional manager or program coordinator. If you've not, you will be getting one soon, which is that um, verification of employment at closure, when you put that employment on the closure screen, is required. We know you all know that. However, we had two system bugs that we only recently found out about and, and corrected but one was we figured, found out that the screen was apparently allowing you all to save without clicking on the verification of employment. Um, and then the other issue was that we, there was an other specify option that was available as one of the verification options. That has no equivalent in IWIDS. It should not have been available. So we've turned it off. Um, if you clicked it previously, you'll still be able to see what you picked and what you put in the specify box. But we are asking you to correct it because it has not gone to IWIDS. Um, and same with the employment is in IWIDS, but it's in IWIDS without the what's called the source employed in IWIDS. And basically, uncorrected records are going to become audit findings, both for you all at your agencies by our monitors and also from us um, by DCO. So we've sent a list of to each organization with the ones that are missing um, or have the other specify with instructions on how to correct it um, so that you can clean up the records and just by, re all you have to do is add the verify and resave, it's fairly simple. Um, so please get those cleaned up as quickly as possible. Um, and if I have time at the end of this, I'll just do a quick 
demonstration of how to find your customer and then because there's no customer names on the list and then um, and then also how to where to go to make the correction um, but um, if you have any questions or uncertain again check in with your program coordinator or send a ticket to the help desk but please do get those corrected um, and we apologize that we didn't catch those bugs till this late in the game but um, they have been fixed. <coughs> Um, the other thing I want to let you know about is yesterday I sent an email around with, um, we have a new procedure for tracking subsidized housing status. Um, as you, some of you have pointed out, we neglected when we set up Kirkinac to have a place to track if somebody is a CHA resident or not. And um, as a result, um, we, we've, basically what we've done is we're set it up, we've set up five non or universal services to capture this. We know you're not providing this as a service, but this is a kind of an easy way for us to capture the data with, and be able to report on it without having to make custom changes to the data system. We may look at doing those later, but um, right now this is kind of the low hanging fruit. Uh, Danny Marshall and Tina Caldwell are gonna try to go in and for any of the customers that they already know, are enrolled, um, are residents of subsidized housing, they're gonna try to go in and update those. But if you know that any either active customers, you don't have to go back retroactively, but any active customers or subsidized housing residents, please go ahead and add that for the instruction. And please start capturing it going forward for all new customers. Um, that procedure, again, it's attached to the webinar. It's, I also posted it on Zendesk um, this like about an hour ago, and the link is here in this presentation. Um, and Danny Marshall is the go-to guy if you have questions about that. He's one of our CHA career coaches um, for one of our CHA programs. So, um, so I just wanted to make everybody aware of that one. Um, and then just a reminder, this was also in the email yesterday, but we have um, waiting lists for training. Um, as well as one more uh, job developer training in June coming up that's already scheduled. So the links are here. They were emailed yesterday and they are also on the Zendoc site for all of these. So please sign up uh, as needed and, and have your staff members sign up as needed. Um, any questions on any of the, the Career Connect updates? All right, Christy's shaking. Christy's watching our questions here and she says no. So I am gonna jump into the meat of our presentation, which is the measurable skills gains uh, procedure. And I'm actually gonna go to the procedure itself. I didn't make slides on this because it would have been redundant. Um, and again, the, the procedure uh, will be in Zendesk, uh, hopefully by the end of the day today or by tomorrow morning, let's say, and then um, it's also attached in the handout to this webinar. So um, just to see an overview, the measurable skills gain is to track and uh, measure progressions and achievements made by WEOA clients who are entered in training or education, and it is an in-program measure, not a measure after exit. It's an in-program measure of how people are um, working through their career pathway and um, various goals towards their individual programs or individual plans. Um, we've tried to outline here the most important aspects of it. There is a Teagle, it's the US um, DOL Teagle 10 16, change one, um, which is a Teagle that covers WIOA performance. Um, uh, expansively, pages 18 through 24 address the measurable skills gain. So we've got a link here to the Teagle um, for you as well if you want more information. Um, so the goal of this procedure is to try to explain who is in the measure, the types of skills gains that can be recorded, and then how to record them in Career Connect. And for that, we'll actually do a demo. So who is in the measure? All in-school youth are in the measure because they are in school. So all in-school youth are in the measure. 
um, until they exit the program or until they complete their schooling. They are in the medical. Out of school youth um, have to have completed um, the uh, at least ninth grade at program entry, which given that we serve 16 to 24 year olds generally, I think most of our folks have completed ninth grade at, at entry. It, it doesn't matter if it, yeah, if they haven't completed ninth grade at, this isn't where they're testing at. This is their highest grade level completed at program entry. Yeah, their highest grade of school. Isn't that, this has nothing to do with their um, CABE test score or CABE test is the school grade that they've completed. So yeah, they've at least completed um, ninth grade. Um, if they have not actually completed ninth grade at program entry, then they would get in the measure once they completed ninth grade, um, if they did that while well in program. Um, they also have to be enrolled in a training program or sec secondary or post-secondary education that leads to diploma, high school, equivalent peer certification. And we've listed the Career Connect service codes here that count. Um, as a, a training or education program. So they have to be enrolled in one of these training services. You will notice the absence of it for out of school use of enrolled in alternative school. We have asked Commerce to include that. They are reviewing that request, but it has not been uh, finalized yet. So at this point, we're leaving that um, service off, but we have we are hoping that they will be adding that soon. We know that that's a big one for out-of-school use, especially for some of our providers. So we are advocating for that, and um, we will let you know what, if that, when and if that gets added. Um, and then for adults and dislocated workers, they also ha they also have to be enrolled in one of the in a training or um, a training service. And again, we've listed the applicable training services here. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, including our, you know, occupational classroom training ITA, which is one of our more, you know, and OGT. Um, and then there are also some specific requirements for certain types of skilled gains, which are outlined below. Um, but generally, to be in the measure, you have to meet these requirements. You, you have to be enrolled in these services. Um, I So somebody just asked here a question about what private sector training is. Uh, remember on the help desk site, we have a list of, of all the services and definitions uh, based on Commerce's definition. I don't recall off the top of my head what the, what the um, definition of that one is. But these are all services that are defined um, by Commerce under WIOA, except for a couple where we've added some granularity, like our bridge and our career, career pathways training. Um, any, are there some questions on this? One question saying, um, would case work experience also be one? I No, it's not because I don't know why. Let us, let us ask Commerce about that one, but I think work, even though OJT has a clear training component, whereas work experience is work experience, not so much training. So I think that's the differential, but we'll try to get more clarity on that, unless anybody else here knows. Okay. So these services were the ones that were defined by Commerce as counting. So, okay. um, and then it says, to clarify, so out of school, high school, graduates who are not enrolled in post-secondary or training prior to exit are not included. Correct. Okay, um, it's saying, just again to clarify, it's saying, so, so any out-of-school youth who graduates high school and they're not enrolled in any post-secondary or any training during the WIOA program, are not included in the measure, and that is correct. That is correct. Any okay. of those four things. Yeah, if they're, not, if they're not enrolled in one of these services, um, they are not included in the measure. 
it, it also means, and this took us a while to wrap our heads around this one, and we had to ask Commerce for clarification. Um, even though uh, we'll talk about uh, increasing lit numeracy is a, is a skill gain, you are not automatically in the measure if your basic skill is deficient. You have to be enrolled in either an in-school use or adult or adult dislocated or out of school use that's enrolled in one of these um, training services. Right, so it's no longer you link to basic skills, it's linked to the training service being open. Right, right. So that's really important differential. Um, so um, another important thing is that um, skills gains, I mentioned at the beginning, this is an in-program measure. So they are based on the program year, July 1 through June 30th, and not at all on the exit date. Um, so this is, um, and there, so adult dislocated okay worker and out-of-school youth customers are in the measure as long as they have an open training service or education service. Again, one of those services noted above. Um, and if the training or education service spans multiple program years, the participant is in the measure each year, each program year. Um, and I've got a couple examples there. So um, if, if DZ starts training in May of 2017, which is program year 2016, completes it in October 2017, should be included in the measure in both years. Um, so important to know, there's two things that are important to know. Um, first of all, you want to close your completed training education services in a timely manner, especially if they're completing towards the end of a program year, so that you're closing them out of the measure. Especially if you're still, you know, you may still be working with them on job placement in the following program year, but you want to be sure you're closing the training service. I mean, you should be doing that anyway. What? Yeah, it should be closed for seven days. Gabby said it should be closed within seven days of them completing the training. So the longer they keep that service open, the more they're going to be counted in this measure. Right. If, if it like, goes past the program year. Yeah. yeah, if it goes past the program year and the service is open, it's going to be read as the, they're still in training and they're still in the measure. So, and, you know, if they've already gained a skill in the previous program year, and then this is open and there's no additional skill because they're not really in training anymore, you're going to be a negative in the measure. So close your training services. As Gabby said, within seven days. Because Gabby's the expert. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so we have a question that says, so must we pre and post test graduates if they are graduated but not enrolled in post-secondary training? That's a good question. Um, well, th I think this is what Amy was referring to in some of those emails she sent about the LNG, that this is a best practice, because part of your program should be helping your customers gain skills regardless if it's part of the measure. So it's it could be part of your measure, but for the question you asked, um, do you have to pre and post test graduate if they're not in secondary training? If you're in school, you're automatically dropped into the measure. If you're in school, right. Mm -hmm. So but if, if you're in, if you're in out of school, you yeah. Right. And so we pre test everybody that comes into our program. If you're an in school youth that is basic skills deficient, it behooves you to post test because you're already in that measure. Because you're in school and right. it's gonna be a skill game for you. Right. If you're out of school and you open up one of those training services and you're still deficient, it behooves you again to post test because you're going to need that skill gain because you're going to be included with that. Yeah. But I think the question was if they're not going to go into training, do you have to pre even pre test them? Well, we you have, have to. Test the pre test yeah. part yeah. of assessment. Yeah. Yeah. But they're saying, do we have to post test if they're not enrolled to post secondary training? If they're not in training, do what they would have to they what would they not be doing? I mean, what would, why would they be in your program? If you're out of school, you're going to be at some point in some type of service other than, I mean, you're not coming in just for job placement services for youth. If this is a youth client. And, it, and honestly, if a youth is basic skills deficient, then you should be helping them that one of the services that they should be getting is some kind of training. So, for example, if I go back up here, 
Um, uh, readiness in there? No, remedial training is here, um, English language proficiency, GED. I mean, I, we split the case with a third graduate. But so if you are, you know, you sh if they, if your youth are coming in basic skills efficient, you should be working with them to remediate, remediate and opening one of the services related to remediating their space. Yeah, I think we're overthinking it. If you have one yeah. of the services, it applies. If you don't, you don't. Right. But, okay. all right. Um, any other questions? Yeah, she's, uh, there's another question that says, what if your program year is October 1st to September 30th? So that's your contract year, but WIOA operates on a program year of June 1 to, or July 1 to June 30th. So um, I believe the measure is calculated based on the WIOA program year, no matter what your contract year is. Um, the other thing, and this comes directly from the Department of Labor, programs, you should not delay enrollment or services until a new program year, even if you believe that there's not sufficient time for your participant to make any type of measure. So if you have a customer and there's a training program, they want to start in May, I don't know, May, it's May and maybe it's going to go until July or August. Don't don't hold back on that service because they're not going to make the gain in that first in the first program year. You still need to enroll them. You, you're not you should not be denying services or delaying services um, to meet this measure. Okay, we have another question. Sure. Okay, so we have another question, and she says this might be jumping ahead, but since to be counted in the measure, the training service must be open. Would this mean that for a credential? For example, to count, would it have to be earned during training? Um, she said, oh. Well, there's other things that it could be Yeah, so let, I think hold that question until we go over the types of skills gains. I think it'll be a little clearer. And then if you pull that question, you can move back to it. Um, any other questions on who's in the measure before I move on to the types of skills gains? Anything else, Christy? Okay. All right. So we're gonna. I'm gonna go on to the types of skills gains. So there are five skills types. One is for. Um, Participants that are enrolled in post-secondary education, you can have a post-secondary transcript or report card. A full-time full students must complete a minimum of 12 hours per semester, again, during the WIOA program year, July 1 to June 30th. Part-time students must complete a total of at least 12 credit hours over the course of two completed consecutive semesters during the WIOA program year. So basically, um, pardon? Yeah, six, six, two classes over the course of two consecutive semesters. Um, and then for each of these, we have a list of allowable documentation. So pretty much a transcript or report card that shows that the participant is meeting the state units academic standards. We have asked the state what our state units academic standards are, and we have not gotten an answer yet. Um, so I would say at this point, just if you if somebody's done well and and is, has participated and passed their classes, at this point, so we get clarification from the state, assume that's a skill gain. If they failed all their classes, maybe not so much. But um, and then the documentation that you use should include. Um, whether or not the participant is in full well, or part time, so we can see the number of credit hours and, and the information. Um, then for secondary, um, so this is secondary transcript or part card. This applies only to participants who do not have a high school diploma or equivalency at program entry. So obviously, if you have a high school diploma or equivalency at program entry, you're not enrolled in secondary school, so you shouldn't be using this measure. And again, a secondary school transcript or a part card 
can be used, again, um, meeting the state unit's academic standards, so we're assuming that's passing at this point, so we get clarification. Um, so that is, that's another way. So for your in-school use, you should, you're keeping those kids in school, um, you should have no problem meeting this measure by just getting the transcript or report card. Um, then for those participants who are in training, um, there's a training milestone. So this is the participant made satisfactory or better progress towards established milestones, such as completion of an OJT, completion of one year of an apprenticeship, similar milestones. So this is really primarily directed for OJT or apprenticeship type training, where you have an employer or a training provider that can provide um, information and, and, and uh, assessment of the progress. So like in an OJT, and I wish Pilar was here. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you want to, can you give an example of an OJT? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> bringing this up. So with an OJT, you might have um, three different skills that are going to be met over a six month period, for example. Uh, one of them might be to learn SAP, the other one to learn how to process documentation, and the last one could be to run the department's QC report. Are you saying then, Dina, that let's say as soon as they meet that first one, maybe in the first two months, they learn how to use SAP? Mm-hmm. It's skill game. It's skill game. The employer on the ISEP, on the ISEP writes yes. Yep. And we get that. Although the OJT as a whole is not completed, that first yes on the ISEP will help them meet the MSG or what, 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 there's a better acronym out there. I'm sorry, measurable skills game. Yeah, M no, MSG okay. is our acronym. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Pilar. And as I mentioned, we're still trying to wrap our heads around this a little bit too. So it's new to us, but that's exactly so. So, um, so this is a way to track progress on an OJT. Uh, again, especially if the OJT happens to split program years. OJT straddles program years. You get that. Right, whatever's completed. Right, whatever's completed, and then completing the OJT as a whole would be your your final. Final, you know. Um, then there's skills progression, and and there's a little bit of. It's a fine line, a blurry fine line between training milestone and skills progression. But skills progression to me is more, as I interpret this, and um, again, my colleagues here can help me out, but is that if a participant that successfully passes an exam, this is more for, I think, participants in classroom-based training. So they pass sort of an interim exam that's required um, they've somehow attained a technical or occupational skill. Um, they've passed some knowledge-based exam. They've gained a diploma. Um, a, obviously, a credential would fall under here, um, although credentials is a, se a separate um, measure. So this could be something maybe like a PCP where they're getting the CNA, phlebotomy, EKG, and you only finish one part of CNA. Like beforehand, so that would be was that yeah, a, was that a yeah, good example. Good, very good example. Um, so, um, so this is this is so this is another one, and then again, copy of the exam results, the test or assessment, copy of diploma or certificate, um, is your documentation. Um, and I will tell you, we're I'm sure you guys are gonna come across examples or think of examples that aren't on here. If you think there's a skills gain and it's not, you're not quite sure, send it in, let us know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll talk to Commerce and figure it out. I think our assessment is if it's probably a skills gain, put it in. Yeah. <laughs> Worst case scenario, it won't count, but probably like this is pretty broadly defined and we've left it kind of broadly defined because we want to give ourselves and you all as much wiggle room as possible um, within reason. Uh, and again, this is new to everybody. 
like I said, we commerce we took these procedures from commerce's procedures from IWID, and then we had questions and they couldn't answer all the questions. So we're all like, um, yeah. Like back up real quick to number three, the training. Um, sure. I, I just thought of a question that some people might have. Um, back to the example we had with the OJT. Uh, so, what if that person at the very end falls off? So, um, I'm going to get to that in just a minute, which is okay. that, but basically, you're in the measure as long as that training service is open. As student, you only only one skill gain per program your count. Although again, we would say if they get multiple gains, put them all in. But we're only only one counts the performance. But you know, better to have more data in there and make sure you maximize your chances. Um, but so let's say, but if the OJT spans two years, two program years. If if they get a if they get an interim if they get an interim gain, um, a year one, but they fall off before getting another gain in year two. In year two, they would be in the measure but not have a gain. But if you have already closed the service, right? If if they close, like let's see, oh, let me give a concrete example. The OJT started um, May fifteenth, and it's a ten week. Does that put me into July? I do my math, okay. <laughs> um, so, and in June, they've been on the job a month, they meet one of their training milestones. They they start, they're continuing the OJT through the first week of July. They don't meet another milestone. They drop the OJT. They're still in the measure that second program year. No, I guess it's like what I'm Yeah. So, if they started May 10th and they, they Gabby's example and then my example. So if um, um, Susie does her OJT, she starts May 15th on a 10 week OJT. She gains a milestone in that first month, so it's within the program, the first program year. Um, then she meets, she meets the measure for the program year. But then she's terminated in late, late June the training, the, the OJT is closed, she's fine. She, even though the OJT was unsuccessful, she still met her training milestone or the milestone. However, if Susie continues to work into July, doesn't make another interim milestone um, and then gets terminated because she stops showing up or something, she's in the measure in both program years. She's met it for the first program year but she has not met it for the second program year. So the program year really matters. Okay, we do have some questions, but okay. so maybe you should read the fifth one and then we can answer the question. Okay, why don't we read the fifth one? So the fifth one is probably the easiest one, which is the educational set functional level based on the literacy numeracy scores. Um, so the participant, in order to count, Again, they have to be, meet one of those other criteria above. They in school use, out of school use in training, um, or adults dislocated in training. But it, if they are below post secondary grade level at program entry and they achieve a gain of at least one EFL on an acceptable adult basic education or um, English as a second language post test, then they count as a skill gain. And this is 
basically tracked by lit noon scores. So it's tracked separately from the other stone gains based on the pre and post test. Pre actually, and even I think progress test. But they have to be involved in some kind of a remedial. Right. Well, they have to be, they can be enrolled in any of those training services. Any of those, any of those services. But they have to be enrolled in a training service or, again, an in school use is automatically in the measure. So it's not just because they're basic still deficient, um, but also let's say they test at a ninth grade level. Wait. They enter, I'm sorry, they enter at a, um, I'd have to look at something like if they're not basic still deficient when you do your pre test, even if they somehow gain on a post test, they're not, it's not a still gain. But I think that's how it was for lit noom, the old lit noom measure. So that's that's not new. Okay. Yeah, why don't we okay. go yeah, why don't we go to the question? Okay. So we do have a few few questions. It's saying, um, if your out of school youth client has an other vocational training service open, will you need to gather games documentation? Well, let's go back up to two Hold on, I'm gonna. Sorry, is that one of the? Other yeah. Yes, other vocational training is yes. So these measures are in effect now for this current program year. I know we're just rolling them out, but yes, if you have, um, this is why if you have pre tests, get your post tests in, um, and then also if you have any documentation on these skills gains, go ahead and put these. This, Start putting them in. I, I should, my caveat is, by by the time you guys come in tomorrow morning, you will have access in Career Connect to add this data. We've got a we've got to flip the switch. So we will we will do that uh, this afternoon. Um, and then the next question it says, is this part of an ITA? So we're saying, yes, this affects your ITA, right? Yes. Yeah, so ITA occupational classroom training is one of the services that puts you in the metro. Um, and then what about passing a practice test and preparation for an exam? Mm. What service they open? Well, it doesn't matter which service. That, uh, you're yeah, talking about the skills is. progression. I, this says participants successfully pass an exam that is required for an occupation. So I think a practice exam, I'm not sure which tell. They're probably asking about uh, yeah, I would say if you have a specific situation, send that to us in the help desk and we'll take a look at it. If you're asking NCLEX review, whoever you are, it might be. So, yeah, we might have to check on that. And I, again, this, especially the skills progression, one, I think this is going to be where we're probably going to need to get have examples and get some clarification on specific examples. Okay, and then. Does a cert certificate of completion for a class at a technical school count as a skills game? It may, but we need to do as far as So you're saying okay. it, may, it may, but we need to verify? And are you saying 76 is a um Sorry. There's a sidebar going on trying to answer that question. <laughs> What is it? No, or we don't know. I'm just so about the a certificate of completion. We will check. No, well, okay. We, we will. It, we think it may. Okay, but we're not certain. Okay, and we again, they, that's a, a DCO. DCO. Okay, we and I. I was on the phone with DCO yesterday, and I told them that we would probably have lots of questions for them after this call. Additional questions, yeah. so. We, all your questions as you type them are being recorded, so we have them and we will flag them to send it to you. Okay, so does the skill need to be fully attained or is the satisfactory progress toward a milestone I sub skill sufficient? Does the skill need to be fully attained or is the satisfactory progress toward a milestone sufficient? Are they yeah. talking about the one? Are they, are they I think. Oh no. It does say participate. It does say satisfactory or better progress. 
number three. Towards these milestones, such as I would think, you know, again, if you have multiple milestones in an OJT, you probably need us to complete at least one of those milestones fully. What do you think? I, I say yes, because each one allows the employer to check off yes if it was a change. Right. Yeah, that way you have very clear documentation on it, that the employer is saying on this, I said yes, I attained this. I don't know how you to verify partial. So, but you're saying at least one. In that program, okay. there, such as the example that Dina gave. And, uh, yeah. So, like, I think Pilar's example at the beginning, you maybe there's three milestones for the OJT. They get one, if they complete at least one, that's a skills gain. But partially completing the milestone, I think, doesn't okay. count. Because how do you document that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right, other questions? Yeah. So, so, instead of the LNG as a measure, now we have five different kinds of skill gains, not just the post test, we have a literacy and numeracy gain. Correct. You can have any of these skill gains, including lit -num, which is probably going to be the one of the easiest ones to get, especially again for your in school use. But, um, uh, but yeah, you can use any of these measures, and they only need to get one of them to be counted as successful in the measure for the year, for the program. Okay. Next question, for this example with the OJT hitting an MSG in one program year and not the other, could we issue the same prove it or assessment as issued prior to OJT, and if they score better, could we count that as an MSG in the second program year? Yeah, I I don't know if prove it, but I think I think that's something we should check because that's something employers use and it does calculate increases. Okay. Because that would be a really good example when they don't meet uh, when they have an OJT that's opened in the second program year, and for whatever reason the customer doesn't reach that skill attainment. That's the smart thing to have as a backup. Okay, we'll we'll check into that. Another one we'll check into. Okay, so then the example about the OGT that was terminated in July, they can then attain a different skill that skill gain to make them positive in that measure since the OJ skills are no longer available. They can, but you'd have to open potentially. Oh, well, I guess. Uh, yeah, they. I guess they could. Like if they had a. Also had an EFL gain that would count. Um, yeah. But for example, like they're not going to get, you know, they're not unless they enrolled then in post secondary, which I think we tend to frown upon those combinations of those things, you know, really, or another training miles or you know, skill progression. They'd have to essentially be in a different training service. So I think really the only one that might still be available is the, the uh, educational functional level. And we'll get back to them on the prove it. Yeah, we'll get back to you on the prove it. Um, okay, what's all the questions? Oh, all the questions? Okay. And then, yes. On hold, I have a question, but I don't want to. Okay, give us one second. Uh, sorry, guys. We uh, just uh, Dora pointed out that um, in school use, I guess you guys didn't always have to post test them before. But in this case, this is going to be a potential skill gain for you. So you're going to want to post test. 
I mean, you also have the report card that you can put in. So it's up to you. But post testing is another way to get your um, uh, skill gain. Um, and I do want to get to the demo. The good thing about all this, this is the hard part. Putting it in Career Connect is really super easy. But I do want to get to that. Um, so actually, that's what, and we've got, again, the step-by-step -step procedures for you here. Um, again, the, for the entering the educational functional level gains, this is use the lit noom procedure. So if you're just putting in the test scores, that's how you're going to record it. What I did add, and maybe we should add this to the lit noom uh, procedure as well, is there's appendix A and B of this procedure actually list the different adult basic education and ESL test scores and their corresponding effective functional levels so you know um, what those levels are. Um, but so for recording the function the the functional level, you just put in the lit noon scores like you always have. Okay, so we have another question. Okay. Um, it says if a person is basic skills deficient and doesn't increase a grade level or scale well the functional level, can we use a certificate of completion and credential for skills gain measure for an ICA? Yes. Yes, but just remember the base of skills is not putting you in the measure. What's putting you in the measure is opening up a training service. Right. But that being base of skills helps you to meet that measure, but it's not putting you in the measure. So we're going to work with our customer here. I'm just going to show you real quick how to do this. Again, the screen is super easy. Well, I want to, we have only have 10 minutes left, so I want to actually make sure I can show people how to do this on the screen. And then what we will stay, I can stay later, so you can keep answering questions um, after if people want to stay on. All right, so we've got our customer here, um, and the customer already has their I, ISS service. They also have an ISEP service. I'm going to really quickly add my OJT service. This is an out-of-school use. Remember, it's being in the, having for an out-of-school use, I have to have my, um, so, I don't know what, I don't know what office the customer is with, I'm just using, oh, uh, Metro. Um, uh, all right. I'm services. What's the name Sorry guys, I probably should have put this for us in. Yeah, is it a academic? No, it's more than this. Oh, there it is. Private sector of these communities. Um, I'm going to say my actual begin date is today, and my projected end date is July 15th of 2018, which means this OJT is going to go over a program year. No IPA, no state funds, any. Somebody's asking, is there a report in Career Connect we can run to see who's in the measure? Yes, there <laughs> is. And if I have time, I will show it to you. But what I did do is in the procedure, I added um, how to access. There's only one report. It's really cool. Oh, and then I got to do my work site. Ah, I should do this. Uh, hack me. <laughs> she Counting. says, yay. Uh, Washington. 
And Lisa from BCS, I see your question, but I'm going to let Dina finish her example before we answer your question. Contact me. Great OJT, weekly hours. Um, for this, oh. um, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it open. So now my customer is enrolled in a training. And I just realized they did it for today, so this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but that's okay. Um, and wow, that first day, their first day on the job, they managed to master one of their skills. <laughs> um, yeah, you know. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry, and I should have, I went way too fast. I'm sorry, everybody. So what you're going to see in Career Connect, I think you may already see it. You just can't do anything with it is you're going to see a create a skills gain, a new bar, measurable skills gain. You're going to, just like everything else, click on it to open it. You're going to click on create. Christy, we didn't check the quiz. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. Sorry, everybody. Um, I'm actually going to sign out and go to a different site where I know I have friends. Um, that's way to <laughs> know, It's been a little crazy here in the last few days. Um, all right, I'm going to go. I got the right password. I've been testing. I've got a couple of people queued up. So Lisa Presley, she's had all kinds of training services. They've been testing some stuff. Although I don't think she's got OJT, but we'll just pretend. Um, so okay, I'm going to go ahead and create a measurable skills gain and hope that I have friends. I think I do. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So here is how easy the screen is. I have that Aaliyah, my office should automatically populate. There's three sales. What's my skill type? So secondary transcript report card, secondary transcript report card, training milestone, skill progression. I'm going to say this is a training milestone because she's in an OJT. Um, I'll say she got the skill today because she's Wonder Woman. And then the type of achievement that you can pick is going to vary depending on which skill type. The procedure has an actual table showing for each skill type, but you'll notice it kind of mimics the documentation. So she either um, achieved satisfactory or better progress towards an established OJT training milestone, not previously recorded. You can't use the same one twice. Or, you know, again, so this one completed registered apprentice. Program, or there is an other. I, you know, again, if you want to use the other, you might want to check with us first. But is that it, for ice cream? no, um, the other is just other. It's um, again. So like, if I was on skill progression. You have, right, you have successfully completed required exam, satisfactory progress in attending technical occupational skills, okay. or you have an other there as well. Again, and again, this is really taking DOL's language directly. So again, it's a little bit undefined, but that will hopefully work to our advantage. Yes. Why is educational functioning level not on the drop down? Because remember, that's done by Lit Noom for Oh, you have to enter that you, yeah, you that you completely enter that by lit name for, like just like you're doing now. 
Um, and then the type of achievement, so I'm just going to say my OJT milestone. I'm going to do a verify. I mean, all we have there is other applicable documentation, specify, and I'll just say my ISTAT. You really want to case note this, right? Case note what the skill was. So I'm not going to, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do it, but for example, in this one, I'd want to say, you know, per the ISTAT, dated blah, 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 blah. This customer met this particular milestone based on like employer feedback, something like that. Follow the story so you remember somebody reading the case notes knows what that soul game was. And you can add the case note right here and save it. Again, in the interest of time, I will. It's not going to do that. That is literally your, the screen for this. It is the easiest screen you will ever use in person. Well, maybe not quite, but it's, it's pretty easy. It's harder to understand what you're supposed to put in when than putting the data in. Um, okay, so why don't you go ahead and read me some more questions. I am going to go to the report real quick. Okay, so it says, with the changing in tape to a newer level, would the post-test be okay with the new test, even though the other test was used as a pre-test? So the tape test is changing where the survey version will no longer be available and will only be the full battery. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know you okay, still so have to look into this and get back. Yeah, we don't know. I don't know anything about tape. So, all right. Anybody? We will get back to you on that one. Okay. Okay, um, the next question, um, if a youth, if an out-of-school youth is in an alternative school to complete his high school diploma, GED, must he enroll in one of those services for the skill gain? Yes, yeah. um, like I, I said this at the beginning, we have petitioned strongly to Commerce that they include the entered um, enrolled in alternative education uh, service. There is a service code for that for out of school use. They have not yet okayed that and confirmed that. So hope we are pushing for it. Um, I talked to them yesterday. They wouldn't give me the go ahead to add it to our list. So we will we will keep on top of them and we'll let you know when that gets added, which we hope will be soon. But otherwise, they have to be enrolled in one of these other services. Okay. Um, then somebody says, why was ESL not a skill type option? And that's because you're recording it as a post test as you normally do. Right. You're recording it as a lit in the lit new test, in the, in the wheel of lit new. Any other? Um, yeah. Then what about customers with an ICA? I'm not exactly sure. So yeah, if it's a if it's a credit course, you could use the post. Um, you can use the um, the what's it called the um, post secondary transcript report card. But that's based on credit hours. So if it's not a credit course, then you're probably going to look at the training mile or I'm sorry, the skills progression. And or if they achieve an actual um, certificate or diploma. Um, do you have to case? Yeah, we said yes. We have to case no. Yeah. Um, is it is it continued measurable skills gain if the participant completes a 16-week job training program? Well. It depends, again, it depends on the start and end date. If they are, once they've completed, unless they're an employee, is once they've completed the training program, they're out of the measure. So it depends on if that that training program is goes over multiple program years or not. All right, I want to show the report real quick, and then we can continue to answer questions. So I just went to detailed report. I'm going to go to caseload. 
And again, this is in the procedure. It's actually screenshotted. There's a measurable skills gain report. How convenient. And actually, it's kind of good that I'm doing it in this site because there's actually data in there. And so the report results will return. Yeah, there's a reason why. We planned it that way. What are you talking about? Um, all right, so I'm just going to leave it broad. I'm going to pick my program. We owe, uh, if I wanted to pick a customer group, I could, but I'm just going to leave it all customer group. Um, you have your office here. Um, I'm running it for all offices right now just because we're in the test site. The biggest, and then really these other filters you can ignore. You want to run it, <clears throat> you run it by the program year. Remember the program year, we are currently in program year 2017, even though we're in calendar year 2018, because the program year is based on the, the year the program year starts. So this, this program year started July 1, 2017. We are in 2017 program year. And I'll run the report. I ran it earlier today, so it should take long. No. And you're going to come back with a summary. So I'm going to see I got 46 people that attained a secondary school diploma or equivalent. My educational functional level will show up on the report. I had 151 people get a EFL skill gain and just a handful of people with these other skill gains. Um, if I want to see who, which customers got which gain, I could type, if I just wanted to see a particular gain, I could click on and the number, if I want to see all of them, I can click on the all skill types. Oh, all right, this worked earlier. Um, I'm going to go back. Ugh. Sorry. Actually, I didn't click on that number earlier. I clicked on a different number. This is our test site. All right, so I'm just going to click on this number. It worked earlier. Okay, so there might be a little bug with that number down there. We'll check that in production. If it is, we'll put in a ticket store vendor. So I can see these are all my customers that the so Big Bird, Big Bird attained it. Finally, a secondary school diploma or equivalent. Um, and you have the date and the office. Poor Big Bird, man. All those years on Sesame Street, and it took this long. Um, <laughs> He's getting a baking certification, I think. Um, so he'd be in a different measure. So you can see, again, so you get the detail. You can see for your office, hire meeting. Now, if you are putting in multiple skills gains for a person, I assume they're going to show up in multiple rows or multiple. So that is just something to keep in mind. Um, if you are entering multiple skills gains with only one count. But you can at least see which of your customers have met it. That's a real easy report to run. All right. Any more questions? Yeah, we have more questions. Okay. Okay. We'll okay. keep answering. If you enter the credential earned under credentials, isn't this the same information? Actually, credential is a separate measure. It's a credential measure. <laughs> So if you um, you want to enter a skill gain in addition to a credential, but it okay. Um, if a youth is in a GED class and takes one test and passes, is that considered a skill gain? They they get their GED, right? Are you saying they got their GED? Is it their separate? I think they're separate tests for parts of the GED. Right? Sure. So they're asking if you pass one part, is it a skill gain? Well, they would have to have the right service open, first of all, to be considered. Right. You need, yeah. Um, well, that, yeah, there's an equivalency service. I mean, I think that, I mean, the, the post secondary, the post secondary is really. Mm, well, they're in that, that's that's a, it's equivalent C test. That's part the of question. It. That's the question that we're still waiting for Thomas to get back. Okay. All right. Well, no, enrolled in alternative education is different. 
some of them do diploma. Yeah, but I guess the question is if we're just doing, if they only get part, like pass one test for their GED, does that count? Well, so if they're enrolled in 411, it's equivalent to GED. Yeah. <coughs> it means you got to get the That's what I would say. Okay. That would be, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Because, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, that doesn't get you anything in. It's a, yeah. Okay. Um. Is it considered a measurable skills gain or skills progression if the participant cle completes a 16-week job training program? Well, I think we asked that we answered that one already, right? Okay. We said it depends on when you start the date. It depends on the date. So if you complete, yes. Yeah, yeah but well, if it goes between the program year, completion may be considered the milestone. Yeah, we're checking on the milestone on the job training programs, the certificate of completion. Um, but yeah, there's got to be some sort of milestone, and again, the service has to be open. That's the appropriate service. Okay, so then someone's asking me about the report. Is there a way to have this report display the people included in the measure who don't have skill gains, or does this only pull the existing skill gains? This only pulls the existing skill gains. Let me check something. Um, we might have a report. For um, one of the things that we're struggling with is we cannot set up our performance in measures in Career Connect because Commerce hasn't set them up in IWIG yet. Um, there are some predictive reports. Let me see if there's a skill gain and if it looks like it's working. Yes. Okay. So here, let me go back so you can see what I did. So I'm actually in detailed reports again in the case management report section. There are these predictive reports. I'm going to click on this one. I you may have to play with this one, and or will, I'm not sure if these work in in our test site. Um, there's a measurable skills indicator report. This is probably one that would. Um, I want to include my program column. I want to do it for WIOA. And I'm going to leave everything. Lots of filters here that I don't care about. And I'm just going to do a manual state range because the quarter confused me, <laughs> truthfully. So I'm going to say our current program year. And I don't know if anything will come back on this one, but I'm guessing this is going to be closer to what you're looking at in terms of like how many people are in the measure. Hmm. I, based on what's coming back here, I don't think this is quite working. So let let us get back to you on that because I think that this is where you'd be able to see that. Um, and or again if you're looking at performance and I would once they move the performance from WIA to WIOA. Um, so let let us uh, play with this report and get a little more information on it and see if this is useful. Okay. Um are you ready for the next question? Yeah. Okay. If a credential is obtained while the training service is still open, does the credential count as a skills gain? Mm. That, would be, would that, that would be like the PCC because they get the, the CNA, the, I mean, maybe some other things. Yeah, but you training. have to put it in as a skill progression skill gain, just putting in the credential, I think that puts you, that gives you your credential measure, but I don't think that gives you your skill gain measure. It's two separate pools and counts. So you have to put it in Career Connect as a skills progression on the MSG. Right. And you want to put it, the credential in as the credential so you get credit for the credential. Sorry, that's, this is a DOL thing, not a 
Okay. Um, can we get all the Q and A's from this webinar? Yes, we will. This is this. We will get. Um, we will get answers to this, as many of the questions as we can quickly get answers to. We'll create a Q and A and we'll post it. Um, just because we're gonna have to go back to commerce, and a lot of our team is in at Not Up next week, and probably lots of you are hopefully. Um, so not maybe after the Memorial Day holiday before we get the Q and A posted, but we will um, get get this posted. One more question, and it was one part of DED would show progress, correct? And you had already said, so oh, you have to get the DED. Also. Yeah, I mean, we'll try to get clarification on that, but that's we're pretty sure you just you've got to get the GED. Okay, and then um, so all the customers who receive the certificate of completion from training need to have a skills gain added. <coughs> Should we go back and complete skills gain for applicable customers? or only complete for customers from today on? No, please, anybody that's active oh, for the, act, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I combined. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so all the customers who received a certificate of completion from training need to have a skills gain added. Well, again, we, we want to make sure, let's, let us find out if a certificate of completion counts. So we'll try to get that answered to you as quickly as possible. Um, but yes, you are going to be measured on measurable skill gains for the current program year. So any customers that you had and even exiters, you should be able to go back and even add the skill gains for exiters retroactively. If you can't, let us know um, and we'll figure out the privileges so that you can go back and add it. But yes, we are, um, we, yes. You are being measured on this measure, this program year. So, and we apologize. I just see there's no commerce didn't release this in Iowa until I think it was late March or early April, and then we had to like understand and translate it for Career Connect. So, um, this the delay. We didn't have commerce's procedures until like a month or so ago. So that's why we're doing this retroactively. Okay. Um, so this is the last question. So a truck driver will have skills gained with a certificate of completion and then a credential for getting a CDL Class A license. Yes, that's what we think. We are try. Yes. We've got to. We've got to verify the certificate of completion. We think that's the correct. But we think that's the correct answer. We will verify that. That's one we'll try to get on right away. Any more questions? I don't know, no other questions. Okay, and again, as you're coming across real life examples, go ahead and put, if they're not sure, put it in the help desk. We'll work with you to figure it out. Um, you know, this is new, again, to all of us. Um, I think, I, I think that's it. I know we're over time, so thank you, everybody. And again, we'll get the recording posted, we'll get the materials posted, um, and then we'll get the Q and A um, posted as soon as we get some answers. And then we'll get updated information. Yeah, yeah. We'll we're gonna any of these questions that need to get sent to DCO, we'll send to DCO, and then we'll um, as we get the answers, we'll. We'll, uh, you know, we'll post them. And we're also going to update everyone's privileges so you'll have access to the MSG page by, by tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Yep. By tomorrow morning when you come in, you can start entering the data. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.